enjoy time. Ignore the clock in the back. Uh, welcome everybody. It's uh, it's uh, geez, November fourth, and it's seven p.m. We're at the Sutton Town Hall. Uh, the first item on my agenda is that uh, I need a motion to approve the minutes from October seventh, two thousand and nineteen. So, I'll second it. Wally and Scott, everyone had a chance to look them over. Any corrections? Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain. That gives you a 500, Jen. Mm -hmm. First one starts to fill. The second item on the agenda, uh, I, there are three that I need to acknowledge. Um, we have a filing for a 10 to 16 Galaxy Pass for a car wash. Where is that? So, phase three, so phase one is where the market is, oh, phase okay. two it's is the blank lot, phase three is where the dialysis center is. There was supposed to be a restaurant to the left. That's where the car wash will go now. There will still be potential room for restaurants in phase two as they morph that, but then we just need to attract some restaurants. So okay. don't have the employee or the housing numbers quite yet to draw those national ones in. That'll be a first for Sutton, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. We've never, mm -hmm. never yep. had one. Okay. Um, also, 166 Eight Lots Road. Um, an accessory apartment? And that will be in a detached structure in a barn. Okay, so that's acknowledged. And the last one that I have is LaPlante Way. Um, definitive mm -hmm. subdivision, a discussion to some of Tom? Yes. Mm -hmm. So they just want to run some stuff past you before they Good. do this formal filing tonight and just make sure we're all on the same page. I would show it to you, but I can't. <laughs> so <laughs> nice. There is an easel there if you want, Zach. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> My name is uh, Zachary Gless. I'm from Existing Grade. I'm one of the uh, surveyors working on the site. I did bring a couple just reduced um, color copies for everybody to look at what we're proposing to do. Flip it around um, so they can see it. Oh. We have us. Plant Way is a private road, uh, 40 feet wide. It was approved <coughs> in 2008 to create uh, two lots, and currently the lot at the end of the road is it's a it's a buy right build currently, and we are going to be proposing to um, revise the right of way layout. <laughs> On this plan, it's a little easier to see. I can turn around in a minute. But <coughs> there's the existing layout, which has a uh, cul-de-sac at the end. There was a waiver that was approved for this in 2008 to create a hammerhead turnout. <coughs> and what we're proposing to do is to take that existing layout and to kind of 
offset it a little bit to swing it more towards the east. Um, on the aerial photos that you have, you can kind of see on that lot at the end there's a, a grassy field. Um, and that's where the proposed structure is going to be located. And with the current front yard setback, that house would be placed directly in the middle of that field where this modification that we're proposing, where if we could kind of pull this a little bit to the east, it allow us to pull that house a little bit out and to work with that lot a little better for to have a backyard out there as opposed to placing the structure directly in the middle of it. <coughs> um, again, that's kind of the, the gist of what the, the proposal is. Again, this, there is an existing hammerhead turnout at the end, and that by taking this and modifying the layout, there would be a portion of that existing pavement that would stick outside of these revised uh, right-of-way lines, so that we'd be proposing uh, an area that would be reserved for emergency access to capture the limits of that existing pavement, and that the proposed site plan would use that hammerhead turnout, and kind of the driveway would be an extension of that to go into this proposed structure. So there's no changes on the ground at all, you're just changing nope. the lot line? No, nope. this it, we would not be creating any new buildable lots. Again, this is just to really try and help and maximize the land that's down at the end of this road for that proposed structure. So I, I know on a, the outline in the red that we have, I know you don't have it up there. Is that the new That would place? be the new layout, the new layout. What you're seeing in red. Okay, that's the... Yeah. <coughs> right, there, was, there was a gray line again, it's a little yep. bit called yep. Sion Muriel, but that's what's existing then. What is so the other? Oh, yeah. What do I see in the middle of the rotary? It's like a little. What do I house. see right there? Th those are vehicles that are just parked on the aerial. Well, it's not a house. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> there's no houses there currently. <laughs> All right. <laughs> the other <laughs> lot is the one to the was. north. Correct. Yes. On the, the uh, on the east side of the road. That's correct. Okay. Tom, is that your first name? Uh, Zach. Zach. Okay. Good job, Zach. I'm Bob. Uh, Typically what happens is um, you make a presentation. Mm -hmm. I ask board members to ask any questions, and I'll ask if they have any more. Sure. Then I ask anyone that's uh, here from the public if they have any questions or any concerns. Uh, mm -hmm. And then we can uh, tell you, I'll, you. I assume you want to know what we think about this, if yes, we can yep. support it or not. Um, any other board members? Thank you. So the lot uh, map parcel or map 12 parcel 23 that lot gets its frontage from this um, curved line where is the 250 feet on that curved line measured the 250 feet for the frontage yeah um, the 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 proposed um, structure for, uh, sorry the proposed lot when it's all done and said it have 357 feet of frontage around that entire the whole um, thing, even the little area over Correct, and, and I made sure that there was at least a one-foot gap. There's this would be one contiguous parcel that it wouldn't be separated out. Okay. So even though this seems like a minor revision, it still has to go through the public hearing process. So, um, <coughs> but the applicant and his engineer really wanted to kind of run it by you tonight and just see if you saw any red flags. Um, I did talk to council and confirm that it has to go through the public hearing process and just asked if they saw any weird red flags, which they did not pick up any, obviously, um, or we would have dealt with those by now. Um, so they would like to file tonight um, uh, as long as you don't see anything crazy about it. If, if you see anything crazy he needs to adjust, he'll still file by Wednesday. Mm -hmm. um, and that will put them on the October or the November 18th <coughs> public hearing process. So they will come before you in an open public hearing with notification to direct the butters, but they really just asked if they could see you in advance to make sure there was nothing that they were missing. Because it's a little different. So the size of myself, the size of the lot stays the same. That's not changing. It isn't the color. The, uh, the the actual size of the lot would actually get just a hair smaller by about 500 square feet, but okay. the the overall um, buildability of that lot remains right. And I and I want to make sure the board considers that we, whenever we do something, it has a ripple effect, and someone can come back and refer to this happening. So, um, and I can try to think of a way that you're creating a hardship for yourself, and it's self-imposed. 
we don't want you to be that, but I don't mm -hmm. think you're creating you're creating a self-imposed hardship um, to deal with the planning board and deal with our rules and regulations. So um, I'll ask if I'll ask the public if there's anyone here that wants to weigh in or has any concerns, and then um, I'll ask the board members to tell you which way the wind's blowing. Perfect. How's that sound? Sounds great. Anyone from the public have any concerns or questions? Okay. Mike, you're up. Okay. No, I I, uh, I don't see anything yet. No, seems like a relatively minor switch over, but doesn't have any negative impact that I can tell at this point. So okay. I think it's fine. Yeah. I can support this. Okay. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I can support it. You don't look you're at me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What do you think? From what I see, I don't. Nothing pops out at me. Okay. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Thanks for coming in. Right. Thank, Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thank you. June 18th. So acknowledging that mm -hmm. filing as well. Acknowledge that. Yeah. With with the changes. Okay, next we have some Form A plans. I have a Form A plan for 101 Central Turnpike. Anyone here for that? Yes. Hey. Good evening. My name is Tom McHale from West Cincinnati Survey. I'm a consulting plan. Plan. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So there's a large existing lot. Plan we're proposing is to create two two new buildable lots with two parcels. So here's Central Turnpike at the top of the page. That's Lincoln Road. So the first lot is up here on the corner of the two streets. And there's a 50 foot future special permit and then limited frontage lot. At this time it's labeled not a buildable lot because that special permit has not been granted. <coughs> then the second lot is here, and then the third, we call it a parcel um, because it is wetland that's around it. But in the future, we'll be coming back proposing a wetland crossing. But we'll say that's a non buildable lot at this time. So there were, again, there are two buildable lots and two parcels created by this plan. Each lot has sufficient frontage and acreage mm -hmm. and upland and meets the R with. Regulation. So how come the corner is where that old old house was that was recently taken? It's gone, right? It's gone. Is it gone? Yeah, it's gone. Really? Oh my god. That's a landmark. That's a landmark. <laughs> I'd be happy to answer any questions about that. Same thing, I'll ask board members. We'll be seeing more of it, I'm sure. Do we know what you're on? Well, no. We just had one comment from the checklist, and that's been addressed. And that's been addressed. Mm -hmm. sure that the uh, for myself the third lot because I wrestle with it when when a plan comes before us that has on it uh, what is the term they use that I can't uh, not to be built on it's just not a buildable lot and then it ends up being built on well it's not a buildable lot in this case is without further action by the town so it's Someone. not permanently restricted in this case it's not like a you know the retreat lot restriction Right, those um, are the ones that I wrestle with, right. and then they come back and we're building on them, and right. I still, no matter these how many times they explain it to me, I say, what are we putting it on there for? Right, these are not buildable at this time without further action by the town, and, and some, I mean, one of these might take some conservation action, uh, or both of them. Um, the other retreat lot would take a special <coughs> permit, so, um, but I assume they are getting this sign now because they have some potential buyers that would like to get some those two lots out on the market, get some money for those, and then they can keep going with the other two. So, um, my assumption. Why wouldn't, wrong. Uh, why wouldn't you put, why wouldn't you just 
pass for the two lots and the rest of the stuff you own and you come back at another time. So you're on the, on the third lot. Yeah. Um, we have to go to the Conservation Commission. Right. We can't submit unless it's a lot. Because oh. their order of conditions gets recorded against the lot. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That answers my question. Mm -hmm. Part of the process. All mm -hmm. right. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. Good. Any other questions from board members? <coughs> Questions from the public. Joyce, your name, please. Ed. Joyce Smith, 35 Vaughn Hollow Road. Uh, Norman, do you know if they have closed out the forestry permits? I don't know that. Uh, about a month ago, when I saw the sign up there and they were advertising lots, and I'm saying, wait a minute, they haven't made any lots yet. How can they advertise them? And there was the forestry cutting plan where they cut last year. And I called Guy Lachance and had a uh, discussion with him. He went out and did an inspection and got back to the forester. And they had three more things they had to do. And he said, you can't make lots until the forestry plan is closed out. That's what I was told. Um, <laughs> and the forestry plan uh, will expire January 30th. So they should have, it has to be closed out before you can make lots is what I was told. I'm not familiar with any law that pertains to that. No, in fact, the planning board is really only um, only supposed to be looking at frontage and yeah. practical yeah. access. Yeah. We look at a whole heck of a lot more than that. Um, that if we got challenged on, we'd probably have an issue. But uh, those are the only two things you're really supposed to be looking at is frontage and ac practical access, which, as you pointed out on lot three, there's no practical access right now. So that can't be a buildable lot. So Joyce, thank you for coming in, though, because if nothing else, the minutes will reflect that there's some other that stuff. That forestry plan mm -hmm. needs to be closed out, right? hate to see someone uh, thinking they're going to purchase something and there's, there's a fly in the ointment. Yeah, I'd advise my client to clear that up. So yeah. Okay, yeah. good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Any other comments from the public? Hearing none, if uh, someone wants to make a motion to approve... Uh, the plan with the date. I'll make a motion to approve this a &R plan located at 101 Central Turnpike dated September 9th, 2019. And it's going to be for two billable lots and one non-billable lot. Uh, right. Two billable and two, two non-billable. Two non-billable. Non I'm sorry, I forgot. Yeah. The, yeah, and two non. Four lots total. Thank you, Scott. Mm -hmm. Any good second? Second. Thank you all. Any further discussion? <coughs> Hearing none, I'll call for a vote. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? <coughs> Abstain. The other all right, so you need to just leave that plan, and then the board will endorse it at the end of the meeting, and then you can come pick it up tomorrow, and uh, maybe in the meantime we can have a conversation um, about the forestry plan and see kind of where that is and where those conditions are. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Good job. Thank you. The next, next full maze plan is for 25 McGuire Road. 25 McGuire. Anyone here for that? Uh, there isn't always. Mm -hmm. That's why I have the Mylar for this one. Okay. So this is one blob of land being cut into two blobs of land. Where's McGuire? Clover Hill. McGuire yeah. is down in the Clover Hill area, down in way down in southeast Sutton, down in the corner. So you can see you have a parcel. Mm -hmm. It's it's nicely bounded by stone wall, and you had a st interior stone wall, but, but this is always one lot. Um, and so now they're just cutting it into lot A. Lot B. Really think these should be numbered, but other than that. Well, I went down there yesterday <laughs> and <coughs> I'm trying to find 25 because I saw 31. Now I don't know which one that is. But uh -huh. um, what I thought would be 30, 25 had a for sale sign on it. Uh -huh. is, that the, is that the property we're talking looking I at? I believe here? that. So they're going to oh. basically sell off this 
I don't know if they're selling this too, but they're going to sell the balance. Okay. Yeah. So, um, you can see the checklist. from any board members? No? Any questions, comments from the public? Anyone here? I'll make a motion we approve this A&R for land two lots shown on 25 McGuire Road. Plan dated October 29th, 2019. Second it. Thank you, Michael. Any further discussion? Hearing no call for a vote. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain. Side. Two sides. Just you. Side so you can sign it now if you want, or I'll we'll sign it at the end. I'll sign it at the end so we can keep going. endorse a plan for 34 <laughs> Providence Road. Okay, this is the final site plan um, for Amarillo construction. Oh, okay. um, the changes since the last time you saw it were an up-to-date parking space calculation table and laying in the eight required spaces. He only needed three, but he didn't want to ask for a waiver, so he, and he had room for eight, so he just put in eight. So, and they're designated by the concrete wheel stops. As you know, this is gravel, so those will not be lined out. Um, and then he made it clear that this is going to be the office addition on top of that retaining <coughs> wall area. Um, and then he put the traffic circulation arrows, and everything else is as you saw it before. He did move the dumpster. It was supposed to going to be over here, but he moved it down here, which is actually even more behind, kind of hidden behind the fence. So, he did everything and it has asked. gone through its appeal period with no appeal cost. Okay. So is that when you just need a motion to endorse? And I believe the plan on that one is, is it 10 3? Make a motion we endorse the plan for the site mm -hmm. plan, 34 Providence Road, dated 10 3 19. Yep. Second. Thank you. Any further discussion? Hearing none, I'll call for a vote. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain. Do you need the second one there as well? <coughs> oh, he might, my boy. Yeah. <laughs> okay. We'll sign these at the end too. Yeah. Keep moving. We'll just keep moving. Group removal exemption. The villas at Pleasant Valley, Black Book Realty. John Burns is present. Hello, John. <laughs> Good evening. I think we have that. We also have an extension as well, correct? Yeah, you want to just deal with the extension first? That one should be pretty easy. Okay. Um, the uh, board had previously extended this <coughs> project to, I think it was November 1st. Um, and as um, you were updated a little while ago, you have the last two foundations going in now. They're in. They're in. And I do have some pictures I'd love to show you. <laughs> but it's not going to happen. Um, <coughs> so when do you think you need to go to? I mean, usually the board gives six months to a year. You probably don't need 
I would say let's go with the year because as by the time as bill plans are done, Fox Cove coming into winter season, a year should be sufficient. Six, six months puts us at basically the end of April, and that doesn't even give enough time to get the grass to come in. So it's mm -hmm. not practical for that purpose mm -hmm. right there. And then we have to have as bill plans done, and <coughs> Jeff Walsh's inspection before you can really be requested. Otherwise, you'll see me back here in six months. <laughs> Say I couldn't do it. <laughs> um, well, thank you for coming in. We've got someone's keeping up, keeping track. So this isn't a reduction, it's just an extension for the time being. Right, for one year. And what will that year end? Um, I would go um, to November 1 again. November 1st. Yeah. Okay. Any concerns from any board members? Nope. Not me. Concerns from the public? I think that I'll entertain a motion to extend this agreement till November 1st, 2020. This is the bond or the... Covenant? This is the uh, yeah, lender's agreement with um, Middlesex Savings. I'll make a motion we extend the agreement for uh, Black Brook Realty Corporation and Middlesex Bank until November 1st, 2020. Thank you. I'll second. second that motion. Thank you, Michael. Any further discussion? Hearing none, I'll call for a vote. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain. That needs the majority of signatures. So if you want to pass that one back and forth. Sorry, Miss. Okay. Yeah. That's a good plan. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Well, <coughs> back to the other one. Now we're back to the. Earth removal exemption. I'm so glad for the earth removal. Go ahead. We're at the end of the development. There's an excess of material. We have no place to put it. We've already had to go through the expense of, you know, we just didn't have the timing correctly. We had a uh, town meeting back in October, so we've already had to move it once. And um, there's approximately 3,000 yards of. Um, between the screen room and some gravel. <coughs> I put in fill because then just in case somebody questions the classification of what we're taking out of there. And um, there's just really, other than the front lawns of the existing homes, there's no place else to put it. That's our alternative right now. Yeah. We do have some pictures. Um, I, I asked Janet she would take a ride down there. At this point, we had a um, last foundation put in last week and it you couldn't even pass the road because it's a, a pump truck you want to get because there's so much fill out in front of the lots. Here's that, the color um, pictures if you want to look at those. Couldn't, the vehicles couldn't pass by there. We had a crane set up there. Uh, we'll have a crane set up Thursday and the people won't be able to pass and yeah, repass because the, there's just no place to put the material. Yeah, is, this, is this at the end of the road? These are where these buildings. It's about two thirds of the way down. It's where the road bends. And so people uh, have to get by because they live beyond the point. Correct. There's just. Yeah, we've there. actually already moved it once because of the delay getting in here. There's a big pile on the right, <laughs> and then there's lots of little piles around the new foundations. Yeah. And uh, I tried to tried to catch capture that in the photographs. <laughs> I mean, I don't think it's an exaggeration again to say that it, it can't be, it's in the way. <laughs> and for the public uh, and, and for other board members, the Earth Removal Board used to be separate, a separate part of Sutton's uh, town um, boards. But when all the development and all the buildings stopped, there was no one coming to Earth Removal. And even the Earth Removal Board, they would show up, there'd be no one in the audience, there was no business to be had. So uh, we were asked as a planning board to take over the Earth Removal business in Sutton. And uh, I was on the board then. I said, I, I guess the call to duty will do that. But I know myself and Mariam, we didn't have a clue what Earth Removal Boards did or what it involved. So. Uh, 
we I got to go down to visit the pits and <laughs> learn about how far how much gravel you can remove and how much uh, the wells and, and all the stuff the earth removal deals with so I find myself anyways um, here tonight saying I, I, we've never had as a board member I've never had so much stuff in the way <laughs> I, I want to make sure we do it right so it's uncharted territory for me and I, I think I'm speaking for other board members what what are the rules and regulations about earth removal that we need to know about um, so exemptions, um, um, they're requesting an exemption. So from what? Um, from having to get an earth removal permit. So like the big permits we issued to pine sand and stone and Worcester sand and gravel and aggregate industries. So those big permits where they're taking out, mm -hmm. well, actually anything over 300 cubic yards needs an earth removal permit, but those are commercial earth removal operations. It's what they do for business and income. But anybody who's removing over 300 cubic yards, even if it's in concert with an approved site plan or special permit, they have to at least get an exemption, at least tell you how much is coming off the site and how many trucks that equates to, where it's going to, um, and you know when they think that's going to happen. Um, and that's really just a matter of kind of safety on town roadways and avoiding things like um, when Lord and Propane removed all their granted virgin beautiful soil from their site and then it ended up down on the IBA and prime metal sites in South Sutton and it added expense and a whole bunch of time in terms of site preparation on both those sites um, because we had no idea it was going down there um, so it just complicated things so it's really trying to, to stay away from those kind of complications so um, if you apply for an earth removal permit Usually it's the owner of the lot that has to get the permit um, and the application has to include the legal name and address of the owner. In this case, they're asking for an exemption. Anybody can make an exemption application. Um, that application shall include the legal name and address of the owner. We did get a call on Friday or um, a call and a visit on Friday just uh, with concerns that this application does not contain the name of the lot owner, which is the trustees, the village trustees. Did you request you call the assignment chain? Um, that was uh, Mr. Vanderlinden. Oh, okay. okay. So that was a concern of his um, that um, actually he was looking at that initial one that said, you know, kind of the owner had to apply for this. Um, and I did go through the bylaws with him and we found that no, it, for an exemption it does not need to be the owner. It, it can be anybody, but the owner's name and address should be on this application <coughs> and it's not. Um, we believe we're the owner. Okay. I'll dispute that with Mr. Vanderlyn okay. and Mr. West when we get there. So I don't know, you know, kind of where that leaves us or if it affects the application in any way, shape or form. I, I honestly can't tell you that. I'm, it's a new one. <laughs> so. Um, I, I can tell you, as we've discussed on other applications, generally the board is barred from making any decision relative to property rights and or ownership. Um, but again, uh, and that's through case law, um, because that's not your role or your specialty, basically. Um, but beyond that, I, I don't know how that affects, if that affects this application. That would respectfully require that the board not take that into consideration. Mr. Vanderlyn has a long history of being wrong with us and whatever this is, we will litigate with the HOA. We have two choices here this evening. We need a permit. If not, it's going on the front lawn of existing homes later this week, which we have the right to do because it's common land. It's, it's completely different. I, irrespective of what Mr. Vanderlyn is claiming, we believe he's wrong. We have legal opinions for that. And I would ask the board to put that aside, issue the permit, we're entitled to the permit, and then we'll just litigate with the homeowners association. I can't imagine, uh, I can't imagine someone not wanting it moved. If it's, in, <coughs> I'm not sure which side of the pile. Uh, I wish Mr. Vandalin was here to address it because yeah. there's a long history with him, but I don't have time to wait for him. And uh, it's just another sneaky tactic on his part. We have been trying to finish this development. I think you know there's a history with certain developers not finishing. Here I am, I'm trying to finish, I'm trying to remove excess fill. I think, Jen, it's unquestionable it has to be moved. It's 
This is, we're not talking a couple of wheelbarrows here. This is 150 truckfuls minimum with that. So I need to get it moved. And so I'm respectfully asking that the board not get into Mr. Vanderlinen's baseless claim that he owns the loom on behalf of the association. So just, I'm sorry, is that, is the question who owns the loom or who owns the lot that the loom is on? And I'm um, I think it would, I don't know, you'd have to ask Mr. Vanderlin and that, but I think it, it could be a combination of both. But, you know, in Massachusetts, you know, a condominium association, once you convey out the first unit, in this case there's 111 units, when you convey out the first unit, the remaining land is owned in common. But we have an agreement with the homeowners that when we paid them in uh, 2011, we have the right development rights to put up the remaining, at that point it was 68 units. So this is loom that came from those 68 units, and Mr. Vanderlin is now trying to claim that he owns that loom that we purchased. <coughs> and <coughs> what he's basically trying to do is stall us from finishing the development. And we're trying to finish this in a timely manner. And, you know, my honest opinion, it's all about financial greed. <coughs> so the, um, uh, the, I think there's a little question that the legal name and address of the owner of the lot needs to be on the application. I think that's a minor issue. I believe I own the development rights of those lots, Jim, <coughs> where that loom came from. Right, uh, but I'm saying the owner of the lot, so whoever owns the actual <coughs> grounds, should be on here. It doesn't mean they need to sign the application. I own the development rights where this material came from. Mm -hmm. I think we're going into some possibly uncharted waters, but we have two choices here this evening. Mm -hmm. I'm not kidding you when I tell you, it's going to be on the apartment lawns later this week. I have the right to do it. It's on common land. Mm -hmm. I would prefer not to do it. I would prefer to get the earth removal permit. They're doing nothing but slowing me down here. It's just vindictive, spiteful, and greed on the HOA's part. And we will just litigate it. I will remove it, <coughs> litigate with them. It gets settled in a couple of years, it gets settled. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. But I don't think this board should be involved in that. Can you put, can you put their name on it? Um, yeah, I could pencil it in, but I, I believe yeah. here's the deal. This is where we get into the, I think we're barred from getting into these things, and right. I'm not a land use attorney, so, so I am just speaking right. from 30 years sitting in the planner position, that the applicant has filled out the application. He's maintaining that he's the owner in accordance with what's being requested in our bylaw. I don't know that we have Anything more? the right or the ability to question that. Yeah. If, uh, yeah. if someone's concerned, I would, I would hope they'd be here. here. Um. I'm here when it is. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Lucky you, Monica. All right. <laughs> well, any speaker? <laughs> Hold on. Uh, any other board member that went away? I'm no, I'd rather continue to listen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. It's, it's a first. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> and I, what he said. I did not get the impression that Mr. Vandalin was looking for anything on his own personal interest. He was, I believe, speaking from the position of the trustee. There you go. Um, well, thank you for coming in. <laughs> you can help us. <laughs> it's, a, it's, it's just a matter of the name, the owner, and how it should be handled. And I'm not an attorney. Monica Lucci, she's a trustee. You're one of the trustees. So if uh, if we write down the un under owner, uh, owner of parcel, owner of parcel. But this is not our application. It's been yeah. filled out. It's not ours to Mickey with. I don't think. So if it was but filled out and, it, and there was another name on it, it, I just think I think it should be moved. Um, oh, the dirt. Yeah. Yeah. I just I think the part. I, I'm, I'm sitting with my planning so board hat on. I can we go through, forward. can you just describe, kind of go through what's being moved, where it's being moved, how long you think it'll be to take to move, where it's going to. Can you go through the details of what you're planning on doing? Yes. And then <coughs> we can. So um, with this being the end of the season and having, as I mentioned, missing, you know, this is, there's another part to this that I won't bore you with the details that's, again, a little vindictive, but that being a Mr. Vandalin's part, but because it's now November 4th, 
looming season is essentially over. Mm -hmm. So the value is really nothing there. There's nobody that wants it. So we're actually having it removed to uh, pine, sand, and stone down there to uh, have them take it. <coughs> They're taking it off our hands. And um, we figured that there's 3,000 yards, there's trailers, and then there's trucks. The trailers hold 26 yards. The trucks are somewhere around 18 or 19 yards. So I just factored in about 3,000 yards. 20 yards per truck is 150 trucks. You know, there could be 140, there could be 160. We just don't know the combination of trailers versus dump trucks. And so how long does, would that typically take, do you think? <coughs> because there's no value for loom um, right now because of the time of year, uh, you know, and getting into I. If we hadn't been, um, if what happened didn't happen, it would have been three days. But uh, we're thinking, I don't know, 60 days on the high end. I mean, it could be out of there in a week. <coughs> I need it out of there in a week, but because of the position that I'm in now, that there's really no value of loom in November. I, I say that respectfully. I think, you know, we can't grow, can't really grow grass this time of year. So the loom doesn't have a value. So <coughs> it has to be essentially stored till next spring when there is a value. So it's all going to one place. I'm that's the plan now, place. yes. That's, you know, that's the plan that I have with them that they would take it. <coughs> I, did I answer every question you asked, Jen? 3,000 yards, loam gravel fill, uh, no contamination, uh, number of days, 60 max, and then two different <coughs> types of trucks, up to 150 roughly, or around 150 roughly. Could be a little less, could be a little more. Go you know, I would like to add, too, it's very interesting about Mr. Vandalin's claim. Loom needs to be screened, and we paid to have all this loom screened, and never did he claim any of it, you know, made these allegations before we <coughs> paid four dollars a yard to screen it, and it's 3,000 yards, so you can do some math. This claim is coming after it was all screened. Because you want it on his property? Uh, we have that option. Because he lives on this street? No. Uh, he lives on the site. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He's in phase two. <laughs> I, I mean, it's a, it's a real issue right now. I mean, Jen, I think you've seen it down there, didn't you? I hope. What? The, the material is out in the street. <coughs> oh, it's right up against the street, that's for sure. And the, the stuff around the foundations is kind of overflowing into the street, yes, I would say. So you don't have use for that loam on these sites when they're finished? Well, I think <coughs> when Jen was mentioning earlier where she saw some pile behind the houses, we've already put some behind the foundations, which well, would be abutting the golf course that we'll be using next spring. So we'd have to build the houses around that. You know, it just, you know, like there's no place to put lumber right now. There's no place for the people to park. And we have all these other ones that are occupied that, um, mm -hmm. and we don't even have snow on the ground yet. So right. no, there's no other place to put it. So on this on the application, who is the legal name and address of the owner? What does that say? It says Black Book Realty LLC okay. in Sutton, PO Box 302 Sutton. So we're considering an exemption under item C in the, on page 13 of the. Yes. So this is incidental to the construction of a building or other structure and associated facilities yes. that is subject to a building permit which has been obtained. And those special permitter site plan, if I had given you the next page, yes, yeah. <laughs> and see. It's been ended with the word the, so I see. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. So yes, 5.9C is the section you would issue the permit in accordance with okay. the exemption, in accordance with it's not a permit. So I'll make a motion that we grant an earth removal permit of approximately. Exemption. Uh, exemption mm -hmm. <coughs> of approximately 3,000 cubic yards of material from whatever Fairway View three. Drive. Fairway View Drive Phase 3, <coughs> Pleasant Valley, that is. The only condition I would recommend that you place is that um, all the vehicles need to go from the site directly to Route 146, okay? And um, that if you anticipate any change in the receiving site that you need to let, so if it's not going to pine for some reason, you need to let us know where it's okay. going and how much. 
There is my motion with those additions. If I get a second, we can have a discussion. Second. Thank you. Any further discussion from board members? I, I find myself, thank you, Scott, for making that motion. Um, ignoring everything that you said. If there was a fire, it might snow. It's not going to snow enough to plow. If we don't do this, we're in the hot seat uh, because you came and asked us to move it, thinking that I'm, I'm, a, I'm, uh, I'm making, I'm, I'm going to support this because you thought it was the right thing to do as a, as a business man because you got to get this thing done, and I wouldn't want to be have January or February here and have bigger issues, bigger responsibility that, that involve safety. And if there's going to be some litigation, it can still happen. Uh, and that's that's your stuff, not our stuff. Well, Thank and, you. Th and this is incidental. So the bur building permit's been issued for construction of these dwellings on this property, mm -hmm. and this is incidental to the construction of this building. Yeah, it's going to go. Yeah. Well, we'd be down there yelling at you. <laughs> Just so you know, there's 38 homes over there, and every 30, every one of these building permits have been issued. Mm -hmm. So it's not as though I can say one hasn't been issued. All 38 have been right. issued. And these are the last remaining ones. Yes. Any other comments from board members besides me? No, I mean, just back up what you said. I went down there today <coughs> to take a look at it, and there was a moving truck in front of me. So people are moving in, I would assume. Yeah. You probably went down on a good day. Do you see where it gets tight in the road there? I didn't go all the way down. I was going to go past him. <laughs> I was there with the pile on the right. I oh. didn't go any further. <laughs> and if you were buying, you would have lowered the price. Yeah. <laughs> your offer. Okay. Any further discussion? No, I mean, I too visited the site this weekend. And again, it's a huge pile of dirt. And that, you know, if all the people who have bought there, you would think, you know, passing this huge pile, that's not a completed project until that's moved, you know. And I think. Like you said, the fact of who owns it or who may go, you know, could be a legal issue that we're not really taking up. But I think the idea that you want to move it to another site for those people would be a win for them. I don't see why you can't, you know. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain. Thank, Thank you. Ahead. Sorry for the drama. Yeah. No. <laughs> I said yes to earth removal stuff. Yeah. <laughs> 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 All right. Correspondence of a you have a request to speak to you from Mr. Wendell from 219 Whitens Road. We have some pictures first off that I provided you guys of how the site's coming together. Um, so those are um, Everybody else should be able to. But there's mm -hmm. how the site's coming together. It's looking like it's actually getting finished. Um, the only two things left to do are the top course pavement and the scraping out the basin as soon as the ground's a little harder, I would think. That's it. So that's the update on that. On to you. Great. Good evening, uh, Chris Wendell. So I just want to talk about a potential tenant. Uh, the name of the company is PowerServe Technologies. They deal with uh, mostly businesses and helping them, uh, you know, when there's a power outage, there's backup battery systems and stuff like that. They, uh, they also are going to store batteries in this location and their equipment. But basically what they do is they just work with businesses to do different battery backup for computer and uh, One other thing I'd like to discuss, um, and I know Jen has a video, but we don't have the screen to pull it up, is when the site was being built, um, well before we actually knew how things would work, there was a discussion about not having big trucks on the site. Um, since then, uh, I allowed Lifesong Church to use some parking spots. They had an event during the week, and they needed some extra parking. I had Ross Express come in with a tractor trailer truck, a 53 footer with all those vehicles parked and they easily made a complete swing in the parking lot so that they would not have to back off the road and I know that was a discussion that I shouldn't have, you know, big trucks like that on the site, um, 
they don't have that many deliveries. They have a lot of straight job, smaller trucks. I just don't want to be limited um, to that site. So Chris is saying the tractor trailer can can pull in, make a complete turn, in. and leave. Turn it over, turn it With turn. people parked. With, With people, people parked park. along the guardrail. Yes. Okay. Not in an empty lot. With the vehicles. Okay. Yeah, so if there's cars parked along the guardrail, which yeah. where ninety percent of the spots are, yeah. a vehicle can get in and ease in make the turn. You actually went quite a ways and we could have turned a lot quicker, but I wasn't there when the video got done. Have you seen it? I did, I just watched it. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Can it drive around in circles for a while? Mm -hmm. That's an exciting video, those of you who are missing. Don't get me showing it after the thing. <laughs> How many hits have you had on this or whatever they call it? <laughs> Views. <laughs> Basically showing a 18 wheel well, coming into this park. Yeah, so it, there's yeah. no back off the roads, which would be an issue for that was traffic. Be, that was our concern. That was a concern. Yeah, I know, I know, but we didn't really know, and I probably should have had an analysis done based off the engineering plan. Do you want to see it 10 more times? <laughs> I guess you can show it on a plan, but until the yeah. site's actually complete, you don't really know if it worked or it didn't, but it does. So. Can, All right. can that truck, uh, I'm just remembering the, um, the the town meeting that we had, and that tractor trailer, when it pulls out, can it make a right-hand turn or is it just able to go left? Or it did turn left, but that's 99% of the direction, 146 that people would go. But the reason I realized all this is they keep missing the industrial park and they pull into my lot to turn around. Okay. And, uh, but they've come in both ways, you know, I don't know, I don't know. Well, we're at the public hearing, one of the things, in the town meeting, one of the big concerns about the, the project in South Sutton mm -hmm. was tractor trailers in my neighborhood, on my street, and, and people saying they're driving down my street, so I... I mean, I know anybody coming to, you know, for a potential tenant, right. all the traffic would be from white, you know, 146, north right. or south. Yeah, I just there's someone here from from the neighborhood uh, <coughs> west west of the site. You know, uh, I don't know if anyone's here to to raise that. Um, and in fact, the trailer has the right to be on the road. The house couldn't be built if you let big trucks right. show up <laughs> there. Uh, but it's something that we have to deal with as a planning board and always be consistent. Um, mm -hmm. I just didn't know. I that just wanted to mention yeah. that. That your driveway wasn't configured to receive and to exit tractor trailers. No, it is. It's it's why you have oh, it's plenty. It's just that there was uh, some concern, and this was even before I had a, you know, this was when it was still in the accepting stages in front of mm -hmm. planning board. I just didn't want to make a big deal out of it. Yep. But now that we see, you know, there's a potential mm -hmm. tenant that may need a tractor trailer truck, mm -hmm. it can work. Okay. And the site, you know, it is zone the same way that the whole Sutton Industrial Park is, so I don't feel I should be, you know, that's all. I'm zoned the exact same way that where Prime Metals and IBA, the whole Sutton Industrial Park is. So you just need to decide if you think the use, the use seems like a fit, you just need to decide if you think, you know, where you think it fits in there, um, and uh, Contractor you probably. got a, n a number of special permits for this site already, building contractor, retail sale, wholesale sale, you got a whole bunch of those special permits. Um, so you just need to decide that and then if you're, you know, okay with an occasional tractor trailer delivery, having seen the video that you just saw, um, part of the finish work was going to exclude tractor trailers from the site. Um, I think you would rather change that sign that says no turning or whatever. So it doesn't say no tractor trailers. It says no turning or something. So they don't 
tear up your yeah I kind of wanted to say no turning around just mm -hmm. for my personal use because everybody that misses the park turns around there mm -hmm. but whatever well that's another if aside they don't turn around where do they, 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 they go I don't know but that's <laughs> not my <laughs> problem I guess <laughs> <Web -son>? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> any other concerns or comments from board members no I think the sign is a good idea mm. okay from, from the public <laughs> concerns comments um, thank, I thank you for coming in Chris um, we need to make a motion or do we well do we, we need to decide if what it category adjustment. it fits in which it fits somewhere I'm sure it's not manufacturing though this is not a no, manufacturing it could be like it could it be contractor because they ins they install these, you know, systems. Right. Kind of like you remember the cut and drop guy yeah. across the street there after the conversation because his site is not looking good. Um, <laughs> not a truck too. Yeah. Too many no, trucks. A, it's the same. He's a contractor now. He's a building contractor, but this guy, he's not really a building. He's kind of a service. service. Yeah, he's a service kind of. He d is selling these battery backup systems. But you they also <laughs> install. So this is another one of those. We have uh, several categories that are mm. broad enough to I guess take it. I did have retail, and I contractor fits in as well. So yeah, yeah. they're gonna have an office, contractor, retail. So these go in people's houses too. I don't know. I'm not. I don't know enough <laughs> about it. My realtor kind of handled this, so I just learned a little bit more in the last few days. Instead of a generator, you could have a backup battery system. I think that's kind of what it is. Kind of idea. Like specialized uh, backup power source. Mm. I was looking on their website, and they deal with mostly businesses. The firm's based out of New Jersey, and they have a location up here. They're moving to this area, so mm. from where they are now in Massachusetts. I think they're in Mansfield or something. You had mentioned computers earlier. I don't know exactly yeah. what they do. I think yeah. they do backup power yeah. for businesses. That makes sense. Yeah. yeah, I was on a computer project 50 years ago, and we had one of those. It was one of the first ones ever done in the late 60s. But if you have a big, huge network, you have to have it. If it goes down, everything goes down. Everything's down. Yeah. No, they do. You know, have, you can look up on their website and stuff. That's where I kind of found yeah, out what they do. How many <laughs> units are they taking? Uh, one, possibly two. So you'll have to go before the, uh, the building inspector. And the I know, the, yeah, all that stuff. I'm sure the use is more than allowed, yes. Right. Um, the, the batteries and all that stuff, I know what I. Fire department. Yeah, the building sprinkled. Getting a real one, yeah, the building sprinkled. Okay. Yeah. yeah, just. Um, so. It's fun to have, find a place to put it. So we didn't have um, time to list this on the agenda, so. Um, it, it obviously can be heard as it was just heard under correspondence other because it came in at the last minute. I don't know if you feel comfortable actually officially listing it on the 18th and then doing a vote then or and just letting him know how you feel now so he can get going with his tenant or if you're fine listing having brought it up under correspondence other and just taking action on it in which case you're just doing a motion to approve this tenant in one to two units um, as described by the tenant in his email um, with occasional occasional tractor trailer traffic yeah it's not like it's a everyday thing the only thing he didn't say in his thing was how many employees and so it sounds only like two it's yeah. very small yeah just two employees up to you I guess if this, uh, for myself, if this company didn't have tractor trailers, we wouldn't even be here. They'd just be a tenant moving in. It's right. just the fact that you're aware, you're aware of the fact that. Well, I just wanted to bring it up yeah, so that. So <coughs> required to under the site plan approval, too. Every time he brings a new tenant in, his right. approval yeah. requires to come see you. <laughs> right. Okay. But, it, but it's not, you're not asking about tractor trailers because this guy has them. Yes. He's not using tractor trailers, or is he? No, he, he may be. Because he's getting delivery. But I just don't want to limit the site to no tractor trailers mm -hmm. if somebody needed a delivery. That's all. Yeah. Well, we already have them. People are already pulling in there, right? 
already using yeah, it. Yeah, not, not, <laughs> not as part of this actual business. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And they just turn, turn around, around and go all the way around. Coming yeah. Out. yeah. Go up and talk to Jen. See if you can turn around. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. Sorry. We're gonna have to stop. Is there a place we can put his stuff that we can see? Uh, that's what keeps looking at him. <laughs> <laughs> I think it at least partially fits in several use categories. Because mm. he does retail the units, he does wholesale the units, he does, he's a contractor that installs them. He's kind of the whole, he fits in any number of categories. So let's pick one. Which one? Exactly. <laughs> contractor and retail? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I mean, it, it feels kind of like a Contractor. A, a, a contractor. It's a contractor. Yeah, it's a contractor. Because there's just two of this, and the fellow does the radar. Actually, I don't think there are. Really <laughs> no, I'm on 46. <laughs> Isn't that same the same thing? thing? Yeah, I, I, I think he has some product and he installs. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's what he does. He's a contractor. He's a contractor. Yeah. Okay. Next place to go. All right, so you're comfy acting on it tonight. Or do you want to actually list uh, the name Power Serve Technologies, New Tenant, 219 Whitens Road on your next agenda for a formal vote? And just. Um, I mean, nobody's getting notification. It's just appearing, the actual yeah. company yeah. name would yeah. appear on your agenda. So, having reviewed this presentation by by Chris for the new power serve technologies. I think we would support that mm -hmm. operation to be located at what? 219 Whitens Road. There we go. In the OLI district. Sounded like a motion to me. Thank you, Scott. Get a second. I'll, I'll second it. Chris, thank you for coming in. Thank you. Uh, Very nice. Else? Me too. I want to, I mean, everyone <laughs> Everyone else should be doing this too, and there's a question, but not the boogeyman. Come in and ask us <laughs> how we want to support businesses. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain. Yeah. All righty then. Hey, it's 710. 710. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, we're trying. We have a public hearing for an accessory apartment at 188 Hartness Road. We need to get that hearing notice. <laughs> uh, then, uh, uh, yeah, we'll have, can I have someone read that? Mike, you got I'll it? I'll read it, yeah. Thank you. In accordance with the provisions of section 6L of the Sutton Zoning Bylaw, accessory apartment bylaw, the planning board will hold a public hearing on the application of Sienna Roy, 188 Hotness Road, Sutton at Mass, to utilize 13, 1,320 square foot of an existing detached structure for an accessory apartment at this location. This hearing will be held at the Sutton Town Hall, third floor on Monday, November 4th, 2019, at approximately 710. Thanks for coming back. Yes, thank you for having us. Nice to see you all again. Okay. Sean Roy, Sister Boyfriend Connor, and Jack here. Um, just seeking approval for our accessory apartment application um, that was submitted to utilize one of the existing structures at 188 Hartness, um, and that's the barn. And that would be with um, a waiver for the additional square footage that's found in the upstairs loft, that um, with the stipulation that it not be made into a habitable area um, that we had discussed previously at one of the other meetings. Um, we purchased this property back in June with the hopes that my family um, and myself and my boyfriend would be able to live together but separately due to um, both my parents having some chronic medical conditions that I, as a nurse, would hopefully be able to provide for them um, some daily medical care and monitoring. Um, so the double properties, the double structures at the property were ideal and we just want to make sure that we can officially live in the barn as an accessory apartment. Thanks. So you have in your file um, my review memo. You have the application, which Sienna just succinctly summarized. Awesomely. Um, <laughs> you have the floor plan that shows the garage space, the proposed apartment space, and 
and then the space upstairs um, that was referred to. And you have the exterior architectural, so you also have some photographs. And then you do have the aerial that shows the way this lot was unusually structured to begin with, where you actually have one access to the house and one access to what was a home business, which is no longer exists. So you actually you wouldn't normally approve an accessory apartment with two separate driveways because then it starts to look like two separate structures, but that's how this exists and has existed for quite some time. So um, that's the long and short of it. As Sienna mentioned, if you uh, the two main things you need to consider here are um, the accessory apartment on one level is proposed at 1,320 <coughs> square feet. Um, and um, that area is exactly the same size as the garage under. It says 1,058 on your drawing because that's kind of the usable space, but the actual square footage is exactly the same all the way up uh, on the first two and then the third floor. You only have the roughly 510 square feet of occupiable area. So, so you've got a number of waivers you would need to grant. The first one would be an apartment over 1,200 square feet. Um, and that would kind of fold into the having storage, uh, second one, having storage access, access to additional storage from the accessory apartment. And then depending on how you view that, you may find the need to grant that the accessory apartment is more than 50% of this structure. If you consider that 510 part, because it's directly accessible from the accessory apartment. So at least two, maybe three, depending on how you're looking at it. Any comments from board members first? No, I think we, um, I mean, you have come before us obviously in the past, um, and our discussion was whether that attic um, area needed to be closed off completely so that it wasn't accessible. But I think we as a board kind of discussed would that be worth the cost of doing that? Um, I think we were kind of back and forth on that. Um, that seemed to be the sticking point that 510 above. Level. I'll ask everyone to weigh in, but I'll just my my two cents. Uh, if you are coming before us and building a structure for an accessory apartment, if the numbers one thousand two hundred square feet. That's not the case here. Mm -hmm. This building is already here, so you didn't build it by mistake. Um, I don't want you to put up fake petitions to make that number. So we say yes, and then once we leave, you do it anyway. So uh, I, I appreciate the fact that the numbers are what they are, and uh, that's how that's that's what you got. Um, so uh, I I personally can can move forward with uh, more than twelve hundred square feet. And if anyone asks, because we're not setting a precedent here, I would say no. It was it was a business in a garage, and they bought it, and. You know, we weren't going to make them cut part of the building out or put up a fake petition uh, to get through an inspection, and then no one ever goes back. So uh, that's my my feelings tonight. Paul? Yeah, we call it a, a pre-existing condition. Um, it's not like you, like a, a Bob says, not like you did this. And now you want to modify the structure. You're modifying the use as opposed to the yeah, I would agree with that. Mm. Yeah. Same. Same. <laughs> Any comments from the public? As we set precedents, we have to always be able to explain why someone has an accessory apartment that's bigger than what we allowed. And the number we first came up with was so small, everyone that came in was disapproved. So uh, <laughs> we had we had to reconsider our numbers because people were the spirit but it's most important that when the 911 call does come for whatever reason that they know 
where they're going, you know, and, and which part of the house to get to and how to get there. So. All right. So you have two minimum conditions and then the third condition that Sienna mentioned that the upstairs cannot be finished so as to be habitable space. Um, should be a third condition, but before you take any action, you have to act on those waivers. So, apartment greater than 1,200 square feet, access to the 510 from the interior of storage, not habitable space, and then you have to decide if that more than 50% is necessary. If you, if you consider the 510 part of the accessory apartment, then you have to give a waiver so more than 50% of this building is accessory apartment. But you've got 1320 plus 510, so you're more than 50%. So up to you. <coughs> so how many, um, just to go through some of this, how many bedrooms are there going to be in this? We are just going to crash in a bedroom on the main floor just for us, just one. So only one apartment out per lot, so yeah. that's true. Mm -hmm. It appears to be a single family dwelling on its own. May it look like a barn. Mm -hmm. No more than two persons may occupy the space. So the board may waive strict compliance with this if it deems it in the public interest and determines that the intent of the bylaw has been maintained. Right, so that's what we're, yep. we're doing. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna make that motion. <laughs> but did you just make that motion that no, she has to write it? <laughs> <laughs> but I'll go ahead, I'll make a motion that we approve the use of this accessory apartment at wait got to do the waivers first <laughs> okay so so i was going to do that next <laughs> yes got to do the waivers first <laughs> based on the review of this project they deem it in the public interest and determine and i'm determining that the intent of the bylaw has been maintained as written and i hereby uh, move that we grant the waiver for this in-law apartment that is 1,800 square feet? 1,300. 1,800-ish, if you're including the attic. Uh, whole, and I'm including the whole thing mm -hmm. in the motion. Okay, give me a second. Thank you. Thank you, Mary. Any further discussion? I think so the record show the record should show that mm -hmm. this is an unusual case right and we're considering this because it's, it's an existing structure and the board would not recognize this or approve this if it was being built for a new applicant new applicant yeah and nobody should run out and build one like this tomorrow Expecting and ask us this for this permit happen. a year from yeah. now <laughs> <laughs> okay and go what it was there <laughs> Okay, so in effect, you've granted three waivers. I'll make a motion okay. to, um, what is this? Grant, grant a special permit. Grant a special yeah. permit to allow this um, apartment at, accessory apartment at 188 Hartness Road to be utilized as an accessory apartment. Okay. With the condition that all boards of the town of Sutton requirements shall be met and number two that this apartment will have a unique address number and posted <laughs> accordingly yeah. Yeah. there should be two numbers on this property yep right. the special address the yeah, sign in other words yeah. and then and the up upstairs your third condition the upstairs can't be finished if you upstairs don't can't be finished or not. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I, so is that two or three conditions? For me, it doesn't matter. <laughs> it's under the roof. <laughs> it's 1,830 feet. 1,830 square feet. That's why I came up with the bigger number, yeah. 
question. We're not placing a third condition. Okay. <laughs> the, the number will be 1,830 <laughs> square feet. Yeah, I got it. That, that's the size of the building that's under the roof. That is the building. It's not being added on to, and it's not being constructed. Got you. Okay. Grant the special permit with two conditions. You second? I want to second. <laughs> That's how I see it. You guys don't like me, you vote against it. <laughs> Any further discussion? Nope. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain. <laughs> Five, zero, zero. Motion to close the public hearing. Make a motion to close the public hearing for 188 Hardness Road. Second. All those in favor? <laughs> Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Abstain. Okay, the board has 14 days to put this on file. It'll be on file in the next few days, and then there's a 20-day appeal period from the day it goes on file. After that, okay. Need a motion to adjourn. We have to sign some stuff. We have to sign some stuff, but we can do that after you adjourn. All right. We have Thank to, you. We have to sign no, no. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure they'd like to let make you sign their stuff. I know. Do they have to? Anyone? <laughs> Motion to adjourn. Second. So moved. Make a motion. Mike, oh, a second. Is, is the second. Oh. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain. Okay. Um, we'll sign the minutes. We